In your human resource and organization development work, you will encounter organization design issues. This video will introduce you to the Organization Design Toolkit, which is intended to serve as a resource as you work with your clients. I'm Amy Cates, a managing partner at Cates Kessler Organization Consulting. We are a boutique firm that specializes in organization design. We have written four books that will provide you with in-depth understanding of organization design methods and models. The toolkit that we have put together for you has the tested frameworks that we use every day in our own consulting practice, working with leaders of great companies around the world. We always start any discussion of organization design with the STAR model. The STAR model was developed by Jay Galbraith almost 30 years ago to help provide a holistic view of organization. It's the what of organization design. We always start with strategy. What's the goal of the company or the organization that we're looking at? What do we want to get done? Most importantly then, our capabilities. What does this organization have to be really good at, better than our competition, in order to succeed? This gives any leader then four levers to design. Structure, which is about power relationships and the architecture of the organization. Process, which tells us who needs to collaborate and how we need to knit the organization together across boundaries of function, geography, product, customer groups. The leader also needs to design metrics and rewards to let people know what are the measures of success. How do we know if we're working together properly on team level and the organization level? And finally, the STAR model is built on good people practices. What is the talent profile of people that we need? How do we need to enable them and give them the skills and set the expectations for their success? Together, the STAR model is about alignment. Depending on the strategy and the capabilities we need to build, then we need to make adjustments to structure, process, metrics, and people in order to have an aligned organization. The second core model in organization design is the five milestone process. This is the how of organization. We always start with what's the problem to solve? Getting a client and a leadership team aligned on where they're going and what the opportunity is has to be done before we go to look at any solutions. The second part is then to look at the strategic grouping, the architecture, and the integration mechanisms together. We often do this work in a participative way. We find that this is the design part of organization and it benefits from having a diverse group of people bring their perspectives to the work. Then we need to make sure that we have the right talent and leadership to enable the design. Leadership and talent go hand in hand with organization. Together with strategy, they are the three ways that any leader brings their organization to life. Transition planning, implementation, change management, we start thinking about that right from the beginning, but that's a big piece of work that follows the core organization design decisions. What I want to take you through now are a set of nine questions that really form the basis of the way that we look at an organization design project. In your toolkit, you have tools, frameworks, models, and examples around each of these. And each one of them is explored in depth um, in our books. The first question we ask is, are we clear on the strategic growth choices? We often use McKinsey's three horizon models, but there are many strategy models to use. Most importantly, we're looking for the alignment of the executive team around where they're going to make investments, which countries, product lines, and the intersections of where those come together are the most important for the business. Being clear on the growth choices helps set the frame then for organizational decisions. The second question we need to ask are, what new capabilities are needed? Any kind of change that is undertaken will require new capabilities in the business. We call these design criteria. They help us choose between different organizational options. Our third question is, have we agreed on the problem to solve? So once we have a strategy and a set of capabilities, we know where we're going to. Now we need to know how big is the gap from where we are today to our intended destination. This is the diagnostic, and this is a really important part of the organization design work. We need to be clear on root causes, and we need our client to own the problem to solve. Then we're ready to really explore organizational options and align on a core architecture. We call this the organizational model. All organizational models are made up of a combination of four core building blocks of structure. 
function, geography, product, and customer. How we put those together in levels and layers or connect through matrix relationships creates our organizational model. We need to explore many options and understand the trade-offs between them. And we need to create one that's fit for purpose to our strategy. Once we have an organizational model, we can get into the specifics and identify the contribution of each layer, including the leadership team. This gives us our organizational chart and roles. Structure and roles is not enough. We need to look at the critical points of integration and how we connect them. So our sixth question and our piece of work is really around creating those connections across the structure. No matter how we put the work together, we will create silos and boundaries. Finding the right points of intersection, where people need to collaborate, is an important part of the design process. Often we call this the business handshake. Who needs to come together across functional boundaries, product, geography, or customer groups to really plan, measure, uh, monitor, and make adjustments to the work? The seventh part of our toolkit is resolving tension points. All organization designs create tension. What we want to make sure is that we have the right people around the table, we have a way to resolve this tension, and at the end of the day, one role is responsible for the, and accountable for the quality of that decision. We call this the golden vote in decision rights. Working these through as part of the design process is critical to ensuring that the organization functions. Number eight is what oversight forums need to be configured or reconfigured. This is governance. Who do we need to bring together? How often do they meet? What roles are included? What is their agenda? What outcomes do we expect? Often, if we don't reconfigure our governance forums, we haven't designed the right conversations. Finally, what do we need to do to enable people in new or critical roles to succeed in the new model? Do we need to change metrics, compensation? Do we need to help them build new relationships? Do we need to give them new skills and tools so that they can succeed and thrive and meet the expectations of the new organization? The best way to build your organization design muscle is just to try it out. I encourage you to bring these tools into your own practice, and I wish you all the best in your organization design work.